Hey guys, it's Mike from Arnold Tutoring. I thought I'd walk through how Ontario math tests at the high school level are scored. Sometimes it can be kind of confusing because it's not as straight, here's how many marks you got out of the total number of marks and here's your percentage. It's actually broken down into four categories. K, U, A, T, and C. You might see that at the top of every test. K, U is knowledge utilization, application, thinking, and communication. That's how the marks are broken down and you can actually use this to your advantage as a student or as a parent to see where students might be struggling. It's not broken down by the type of math they're missing, but the types of questions uh, that they might be struggling on. So here's four examples, one from each category. The first one, knowledge utilization, is really just did you study, did you figure out what formulas were going to be used, and do you know sort of the core concepts of this unit? So for instance, if it was exponentials, you might have the square root of 3 to the 7 times 3 to the 4 over 3 to the 5. That might look complex right now, but if you know your exponent rules, we can just simplify the inside of the square root. That's 3 to the 11 over 3 to the 5, which is the square root of 3 to the 6, because we can subtract. The square root is the same as 1 half, so this is the same as 3 to the 3. 3 to the 3 is 27. So it's literally just going through the mathematical operations and showing that you can do that calculation, knowledge utilization. Second part is application. There's often quite a few marks given out in this uh, category, as you would expect, it's taking that knowledge and applying it to some sort of situation. So you can think about like roller coaster questions or Ferris wheel questions uh, with graphs. This one's another exponential question, um, but using interest and money. So how long will it take 500 to double at 8% annual interest? So if we know our formula, we can use that R over N to the NT. And you could say it needs to grow to 1,000 from 500 principal at 1 plus 0 0.08, that's the interest. It's compounded quarterly, so we're dividing by 4. And then 4 times t. t is what we're looking for. You could use logarithms to solve for this, but it's showing that you can take a, generally a word problem, contextualize it, understand what area of the curriculum it's coming from, and then apply the proper math to actually get there. Could take a calculator from here to finish. Uh, thinking type question are often the most difficult ones on the uh, test or on the exam, and it's where students often struggle a lot because it really gets at testing whether you know the underlying concept and haven't just memorized a bunch of formulas. So for instance, find the equation of two tangent lines to y equals x squared that pass through the point 1, negative 3. That's actually, it sounds like a very common sort of calculus and vectors question, however, once you draw this curve, y equals x squared, you'll notice that this point 1, negative 3 is actually down here. So it's not our traditional derivatives question where the point lies on the curve. Instead, there's going to be, if we keep the curve going, instead there's going to be two different tangent lines that go through that point and are tangent to the curve. So it'll actually require some really tricky algebra, understanding that any point on this curve is the point x and the point x squared, and then um, understanding how we can take two equations and two unknowns to build out those tangent line equations. Again, using sort of some core material from the subject that you're studying, but then kicking it up a notch in terms of the level of difficulty that truly makes you think about the context of the problem, not just rote memorization or something that you've seen on the worksheet. Um, those are tough to study for because they're generally difficult questions to even make up, so teachers um, or even tutors often don't want to give away all of those problems because they like to use them for tests. So thinking questions are tough, usually there's only one or two of those. And then communication. Communication, sometimes you can have a direct communication question, but it also spans the length of the entire test. So communication will be scattered throughout the test because you're looking at things like notation, are you using uh, the proper notation? Are you using equal signs where things between things that are actually equal? Are you including theta when you're talking about trig trigonometry and the angles? Uh, things like that, just really preparing students to take on university challenges where they're a lot more strict on, uh, on communication and, and using proper notation. But an example of a core communication question would be explain the difference between y equals x minus 3 over x minus 3 and y equals 1. These kind of look the same because x minus 3 over x minus 3, we can cancel those and it equals 1. Something divided by itself is 1. But these are not quite the same graphs because 
the domain of this initial one, x cannot be 3, so there's actually going to be a hole at the point 3, 1. So you'd actually have to write that out in words, hence communication, uh, so that the grader could understand, again, that you really do understand the concept. So sometimes the communication and the thinking questions overlap quite a bit, because that's what they're trying to uh, test, if you, if you know kind of that next level of understanding. Hopefully that clears up how those boxes at the top of uh, the high school tests look. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can always reach out to Arnold Tutoring. We've seen a lot of these tests now. Uh, you can reach us at info at arnoldtutoring.com. Thanks so much.